Hello and welcome back to the Limit of Adhesion for the USF 2000 League. We're at round six at Summit Point. My name is Mark and joining me in the commentary booth is Steve. How are you doing, Steve? I'm great, thanks Mark. It's been, uh, it's been a fantastic uh, couple of weeks and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing these uh, drivers driving around these country roads in West Virginia. <laughs> yes, definitely need a bit of John Denver playing in the background. As we see, why don't you take <laughs> us to the championship standings, Steve? Yeah, currently at uh, the top of the pile is Tom with 205 points. Uh, next we have uh, Merrin Hoogervin, Gareth Winslade uh, and Gavin Kelly, followed by Dan O'Hammond, Eric Piusi, Chris Forrester, Kenneth Olive, Russell Bright, Robert Costa, oh, sorry, Roberto Costa, Keith Schooling, Axis Experience, Ben Childcroft, uh, Nicola Lee, Michael Tyban, Yuha Manninen, Lawrence Henning Jenkins, James Pepper, Slade Bees, uh, Stephen McCann and Michael Messenger bringing up the last. That's Michael Messenger, of course. Um, LOA regular, but making his debut at the USF 2000 League today. And look at that, he's straight on top in practice with a 108.1. And I might, I might just see me. Steve Chiumalarin down in third. It's not often you see him outside of the front. Well, outside of first, to be honest. It certainly ain't. No, he's, uh, he's obviously struggling at this track. <laughs> yes, quite possibly, which is something that I never thought I'd ever be saying about any track, ever. Um, so yeah, Michael Messenger doing a great job in practice. Let's see if he can deny Chiumalar in a pole position. Of course, Chur's had a pretty much a complete stronghold on pole position. As we see, yep. of course not, Chiumalar in back on pole, back on top with with Jules, Gavin Kelly, alongside him on the front row. Mike Messenger on debut in the USF 2000, slots in third. Yeah, it's nice to see uh, um, Gavin Kelly up near the front again. Um, obviously, Michael Messenger, I think this is his first race in the uh, USF this season. It so, is, yeah. he'll, be, uh, he'll be looking to uh, to put in a, 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 strong, a strong race at the moment. Now, quite crucially, Steve, Tua getting pole position means that he does get an extra point. I'll cover the points standings in the full championship permutations later on. But it's worth knowing that, obviously, Tua's right out in front, and Merrin, realistically, the only person in with a fight, in the shout of stopping him. Merrin Hoogavin, of course, down in fourth, so not the best qualifying for him. If he wants to get this championship, he needs to get a move on. As we see the safety car come into the pits and we are racing at summit point. Tio Malarin hangs onto pole position with an absolutely amazing launch. Messenger there straight up into second with Kelly in third, holding off, defending heavily to the inside from Meryn Hoogavin. We see Meryn Hoogavin going, trying to go around the outside of Kelly and he does! Marion Hoogvin with an absolutely fantastic move and he's going to have to work his way up through the field and yeah, try and finish ahead of Tua if he wants to take this championship fight for the next round. Yeah, he's going to need as many points as he can collect um, and obviously Tua to, uh, to not score as many points to keep the championship alive. Yes, we saw a tiny little lock up there from Tua as he's under a lot of press pressure from Michael Messenger. We see as they come through the S's, Messenger still right on the back of Malarin. Just trying to pressure himself into pressure Malarin into a mistake. So we see Kenneth Olive there going a little bit wide and losing a few places. He slots in behind Roberto Costa. Back into He'll ninth. He'll need a couple of laps. He'll need a couple of laps to scrub his tyres again after that, I should think. He will do, yeah. As we see Messenger there with the fastest lap on lap one and still right on the back of Malara and just can't quite get close enough to attempt to move down into one as we see another lock-up there. And, oh, in fact, quite a few lock-ups. See Messenger still right on the back of Malarin. Now, if we take a look at the championship standings, Malarin has 205 points to Hoogerin's 117 going into this round. So that's a lead of 88 points and with drop scores we've got 106 points available after this round. So yeah, with the drop scores Malarin needs to have a 92 point gap. So he's currently got an 88 point gap, well 87 point gap after 
that pole position as we see Hoogerman going slightly wide. Will he lose a position to Kelly? Yes, he will. Kelly now. That certainly doesn't. That's it, that's, that certainly doesn't help his uh, his cause when it comes to the championship and, uh, and and trying to get as many points as he possibly can. Indeed. So yeah, realistically, if Malaren can either match Hoogerman or outscore him, that's near it makes no difference championship over saying that let's be honest steve the championship i'd be very surprised if that went to anyone other than tour malarin it's just a case of when i think i would think so yeah i mean like i say just keeping it alive at the moment but obviously it's a case of these two races if if malarin uh, goes through the races unscathed and, and collects as many points as he can i think the championship is Indeed, I think so. As we see a nice little fight back here for 9th, 10th and 11th. It's Lauren Aaron Jenkins, Roberto Costa, Russell Bright there. Russell Bright not able to find a way through. As we see Lindsay just hanging back there in 11th. He's had quite a sort of slow and steady start to the race. He's normally right up there near the front. As we see Malara now all over the back of Kelly. He's on him like a rash, Steve. He is, yeah, definitely. I mean, he's very, he's pushing really hard to uh, to get past Kelly at the moment. But on the on the uh, the, the subject of Winslade, I think Winslade had a, um, a pit lane start. Ah, oh, yes, I of course. Come out right. of the pit exit. As we see there, Kelly just a little lock up going slightly wide in turn one. That opens the door for Hoogevin, who does not need a moment's hesitation. He grabs that place straight back, and now Kelly's right under pressure from. Chris Forrester and Ben Chalcroft as well, all in that fight for third, the final podium spot. So yeah, they, these lads are going to have to crack on because uh, obviously Malaren and Messenger are already two and a half seconds, um, you know, three seconds in front of this group. Indeed, yeah, and that gap's just growing lap by lap, corner by corner even. We see Man Hoogvin now. Can he break away from Kelly in that wonderful livery that last time out I mistakenly called a wizard's livery? And <laughs> Gavin has assured me that it is not, and it's actually quite a famous livery. I think it's like an, an old Jordan or something, I don't know. Can't, it's definitely not an important car that's modelled on. <laughs> um, as we see now, that fight is certainly not over. Kelly and Hoogevin side by side into turn one. Another tiny little lock up. Hoogevin keeps to the inside. He, I think he's done just enough to keep that place, but not for long. Ka Kelly now weaving left and right, trying to find a space, but one does not exist. Hoogevin stays ahead, keeps the final podium position. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I, and uh, Larin uh, still pulling out another uh, couple of tenths as well as. Uh, oh, Hoogevin's off! Hoogevin goes off, yes. Oh, absolute nightmare for Hoogevin. He's up right the way down to seventh place now. Oh, he will be absolutely kicking himself after that. And yeah, he slots in behind Russell Bright, back down in eighth. And he's now quite away, a good sort of 10, 15 seconds off that pack that he was leading. So yes, yeah, very much. This will um, certainly not be doing... Messenger now first. Yes, we, yes, we see Messenger doesn't like had the position well before the corner he must have got an absolutely superb drive out of turn 10 final corner as we see this he's fight. also taken my apologies school he's i was just saying that my messenger that fight is not over and chimera still sticking with him will he try and move down into this hairpin here no thinks better of it chimera in is not going to want to let that place go. He's going to want to get back in front. I think actually Michael Messenger took the uh, fastest lap as well from uh, Malarin, so he'll be wanting that back as well. He will indeed. Of course, there is a point for pole position, a point for the fastest lap of the race, and then F1 style points for the top 10. So, yes, if Chumbalaran can finish this race with fastest lap, he will get a point for uh, saying that. Michael Messenger's just gone even faster. Blistering pace. Here's 
we see now the battle for third. Chalcroft has gotten ahead of Kelly. So we'll see if Kelly can fight back. We're going to see a replay. Yeah, there we go. Just a slight little lock up on the left front. Just sent Hoogvin wide, and yeah. Oh, I do, I really feel for him. It's a bit of an unforced error, really. So I think. Yeah, once you're on the grass, it's like ice, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think Kelly was attempting an overtake there. So I wonder if maybe. No, I think. It... I think, like you say, there was a bit of a lock-up and, and off he went. Yeah, as we see Roberto Costa saying, well, if that's good enough for Hoogovin, it's good enough for me, and having another little sympathy <laughs> spin, as we see Tua Malarin so far off the road there that he's almost at another racetrack, see? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Good. I try to carry far, far too much speed through that corner there. Yeah, as we see now, Kelly in fourth, not giving up on that final podium spot. He's only... Four tenths behind Chalcroft. But I think he's a little too far back to attempt the move down into turn one. We shall see. Yeah, not not, not close enough at all there. No, although Chalcroft didn't miss the apex slightly, and that's brought Kelly right up onto the back of him. But again, we're now getting into a point of the circuit where it's a little bit tricky to overtake. So I think, yeah, he's going to have to concede this one, just try and stay as close as he can. And overtake down into what most people call the hairpin, my track map is calling me this the EV Gardner turn, which that's a certainly a new one, which I think if they don't get a sponsorship by Nissan for the Nissan Leaf at that corner, they are certainly missing a trick. As we see now, Gio Malinen defending from Kenneth Olive. I saw another little bit of smoke. These drives are all locking up slightly down into that, that corner. As we see, we're gonna see another Replay of Chalkoff into the wall. Ooh, oh, yeah. that's a heavy hit. That now promotes Kelly back up to third. As we see, Hoogovin now made his way up to sixth on the back of Russell Bright. He's going to want to try and make a position. Oh, Bright got slightly too wide, just dipped a couple of wheels into the gravel. I think that's going to give Hoogovin the place. That was well held, though, right? Russell there, that, he, he well held. Yes, you're certainly yeah. right, Steve. That was brilliant. I thought for certain that he was going to be in the wall there. But Definitely. He, he, any any sort of like stick there, and he was uh, he was off left or right, straight into the wall of the uh, of, of the surrounding vegetation. <laughs> Indeed. And of course, we've got Winslade not too far behind. He's seventh, just a second back from this fight. So yeah, he's got to be careful not to lose too much time, otherwise he's going to slip backwards into the clutches of Gareth Winslade. As we see Hoogovin there getting, having to defend the inside. I think he was defending the thin air a bit there. I think he was slightly offline through the corner beforehand. So we see a lovely shot of that tree there. That is a very nice tree. <laughs> There's plenty of them around here. There are indeed. Back watching the fight between Bright and Hoogovin. Bright is probably going to be a little bit annoyed at himself for making that mistake. He's now right on the back of Hoogovin. Hoogovin's not coming away with this like I thought he was going to. I thought he was going to be straight. Malarin in the pits. Mal Malarin in the pits. Malarin in the is that, pits. Is that correct? Malarin in the pits. This could be a game changer for me. I, yeah, I don't know what what's happened. What's happened there? I, I, I'd be interested to find out what's what's gone on through the, uh, the replays, but definitely Tom Malarin showing us in the pits on the uh, the leaderboard. He is, yeah, as we saw there, Russell Bright and Marin Hoogovin just swapping places once again. Just Bright not able to get past and make it stick, but he's now getting to the inside. Is there a space? Not quite enough. He's ducked back inside. Hoogovin again covering the inside, but no, nowhere near enough room. Um, there we go. There's what happened to Millar. Oh. oh, again, a big hit. Big hit. Yeah. As we see, Lauren and Sarah Jenkins, again, it's two wheels on the grass, and yeah, you're a pasture at that point, but thankfully, many trees around this track, but Aaron Jenkins didn't manage to hit one of them, so he will continue with no damage. So that enables Hoogovin to close in slightly on points for the uh, for the championship against Bularin, um, who now is a lap down. Yes, and that is an absolute nightmare for Malarin. He doesn't look like he's going to be getting any points from this race. So we saw uh, another little lock-up from Winslade. 
not, I think it was actually Russell Bright that oh, locked sorry, up there. My apologies. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it's something to do with the track temperature or just lack of grip. As we see Kenneth Olive off the track there, but yeah, we've seen a lot of off tracks, a lot of lock ups. Except from this man here, Michael Messenger. Almost forgot that he was in the race, to be honest. He's just doing everything right, just out front, cruising away. He's got a seven and a half second lead. Just, yeah, unchallenged now that Tim Lyons had that mistake. Yep, he's having a very steady race. I'll tell you who is certainly not being unchallenged, and that is Marin Hoogevin. Still got Russell Bright stuck to his bumper. And do you know who else has joined the fight, Steve? Winslade's right there. Just a couple That's of tenths it. back. Yeah, Winslade. A steady race from both these drivers, and it's it's paying dividends. Indeed. And tell you what, Chris Forrester, up to third. When did that happen? I completely missed that. Yeah, once again, a, a, a quiet drive from Chris, who's uh, who's having a fantastic, uh, you know, time around uh, around the roads at uh, at some point, and he's just kept it nice and clean and steady, and. You know, he's, he's up there in third now, which is uh, which is great. Indeed, yeah, as we see, we saw Winslade there just trying to get a nose alongside Bright, but just not enough room around this tight, twisty circuit. Yeah, we'll see. Again, hard to overtake through the S's, but they're all nose to tail. They're getting so close together, Steve. It's a, it's a fantastic little track. It's such a busy little track as well. And obviously you've got the, the start-finish straight, which you've got the, the toe down to try and make a pass but the infield is is super busy and it keeps you on your toes all the time you're talking of that long back straight with a slip stream there they are now as we see russell bright i think again he nearly put two wheels into the gravel there desperately don't want to avoid doing that as we see winslade just eking ever closer but i think bright's in the slip stream from Ugovin, and that's gonna just about keep him safe. A big dive. Yeah, Winslade decided, nope, I'm close enough. I'm going to go for the dive bomb. He ultimately wasn't quite close enough. But, oh, you do love to see moves like that, don't you, Steve? Yeah, I mean, it's a, that's a, a squeaky bum time, is that? And it's, it's uh, uh, eyes closed and hope you don't hit anybody. Um, luckily, there was no contact between uh, Russell and, uh, and Gareth, so he's, uh, he's all good. I wonder if that on to the next. I wonder line. if that was scare tactics, as we see. Oh, if they were scare tactics, they have worked. Russell Bright losing it on his own through the hairpin, and that promotes uh, Winslade. Such a pity because fit. Russell was having a yeah, Russell was having a strong race as well. So he's un unfortunate and uh, with the back end coming round. Yes, and that promotes Mananen now up to sixth, Olive up to seventh, as Bright. Oh, Bright has towed, I think. He's showing us in the pits. So. Has he broken something? Yeah, there's the spin. And. I don't. He's not been collected, has he? Yeah, I no. don't think he hit anyone. Ah, but, he's oh, beached he's it. beached it. Oh, no. He's beached it. Ah. Oh. Once the back wheels have come off and he's on the, uh, on the little rumble strip, that's it. Game over, unfortunately. Oh, that's absolutely heartbreaking. It's so unfortunate. Just. So unfortunate. Yeah. He was just, oh gosh, that's a, that's a sorry sight seeing a car beached on the, on the rumble strips like that, wheels spinning like a little turtle that's been upended and on its shell, the little legs just wiggling around. Oh, but yeah, you know, we'll see. We've not got much time left in this race, so unfortunately, I don't think he's going to be able to get any points from this, which is a right shame because he had an absolutely storming first half of this race. Now, we should probably talk about the reverse grid, Steve, because top eight... You took the words right out of my mouth. ...reverse. <laughs> and currently, are in eighth place is Roberto Costa. So, he may well find himself on pole position for the next round. Yeah, I'm just trying to see what... Uh, what there's. Erin Jenkins is seven and a half seconds behind Costa. So, the chances are it's going to be, you know, uh, uh, Roberto Costa on the... Uh, on the front row, on the on the on pole position for the second race with uh, is it Kenneth Olive. Indeed, it'll be As, Olive alongside uh, him. Yeah, yeah. So we've got Michael Messenger well out in front from Gavin Kelly, again well ahead of Forrester in third. The top three, in fact, the top four or five are quite well spread out. 
who Gavin's put a bit of distance between him and Winslade, who is actually starting to come under pressure from Manninen now. So that seems to be the closest yep. battle out on track, so we'll see if we can keep an eye on that. Just eight tenths of a second between them. Yeah, he's certainly closed the gap on uh, Winslade. He has indeed. And of course, this has big championship connotations. I'm just trying to do the maths. I've got a little spreadsheet here. In round one, sure is not looking like he's going to get any points. Marin Hugovin is in fourth, so we'll get 12 points. That so yeah, Hugovin just needs to keep doing this, just keep outscoring Malarin and hope that Malarin has some more bad luck. I mean, I think fourth, it'll keep the championship fight alive for the moment, Steve. But yeah, Hugovin's going to need a bit more than that if he wants to take this fight on to the next couple of rounds. He will, yeah, I mean, and, and uh, Malari will be six places, as it stands at this moment in time, he'll be six places for this behind on the second race, because obviously um, Tom Malari will be starting 10th, and Hugovin will be, will revert to, I think it's sixth, so yeah, they're going right. to be quite close as well at that point. Indeed, so yeah, we'll see if Malari can charge through the field and take the championship at this round, or we'll see if Hukovin can finish high enough to deny him and take the fight on to Charlotte, which is the next rounder coming up. Do we see this fight here for fifth? Definitely not over. Manning and now just three tenths of a second behind Winslade. Nice and firm on the brakes. Good line through turn one, but not quite close enough through this tight twisty section. We've only got two laps left. So I think Manninen, is he going to try and force Winslade into a mistake or is he going to try and do it out on track and get the move done? I think Winslade is going to have to go very defensive uh, down the, uh, the, the, the start finish straight to make sure that uh, he forces uh, Manninen you know, to take the outside line around the, uh, the, la the first corner. Indeed, did we see the messenger start the final lap? We saw Win, uh, Winslade not bother to defend into the hairpin as Manon did go for that attacking inside line. So we'll see how close Manon can get, whether he can get the slipstream down the last straight. Sorry, through the last corner, and here they are. Coming across the line to get the white flag. I don't think Manon's close enough. This is the last real overtaking opportunity. Winslade does go defensive. Manninen to the outside, just not quite late enough on the brakes, but Winslade goes slightly wide. That opens the door for Manninen. Winslade will have the inside for the next corner, but can Manninen get alongside enough? No, he can't, but he does the switch back, goes for the inside anyway, but he's just not alongside enough. And It's a risky overtaking at that corner, though. It certainly is. I'm talking of risky overtaking manoeuvres, will we see one into here? Man and goes to the inside, not quite far enough alongside. And as we see now, Michael Messenger wins on debut at the USF 2000 League. He wins at Summit Point. Kelly crosses the Great line result. in second. Yeah, what a fantastic drive there for Messenger. That was absolutely outstanding. I mean, Messenger and Forrester as well. We barely mentioned them all the race. And... Kelly the same. Exactly, yeah. Kelly had that fight with... Um, oh, gosh, who was it? Kelly had that fight with Hukovin near the start and Chalcroft as well. But, yeah, after that, Messenger Kelly Forrester just stormed away. Hukovin could only recover to yeah. fourth. Yeah, the big the big surprise was obviously uh, Tom in down in tenth. A lap behind. Indeed. And... So yeah, we'll see what happens in the next race. So, as it stands, looking at the championship standings, the championship will not be decided today and it will go on to Charlotte, which is the next race up. But we'll see if that will change in round two. So worth remembering. So grid... Oh, sorry, Steve. No, no, it's no problem. Now, reverse grid for uh, for race two. Um, so 
they're, they're swapping around slightly as they're coming round in the rolling start. But, um, Roberto Costa leading the way with uh, Kenny Follow in second place at the moment. Yeah, safety car pulls into the pits and we are racing at Summit Point. Costa there hangs on to his lead. A bit of a gap there to Olive, but behind there we see Manon and Winslade resuming their battle from the first round. Winslade having to get out of it a bit and then just out of nowhere Hookman appears. And Hookman's up to second already. Is he going for the lead? No, he can't be going for the lead. This is down there three wide going through to turn wide. three. Oh, touch. Little touch on the front Contact. wing. Two, three off. The top two. Oh gosh, Ooh, there's carnage. Dear. That's Manning off. We saw Costa off. We saw um, who else was off? Uh, we saw Olive off as well. And we see Hoogvin there with damage to his front wing, seemingly, as he goes straight off at the first corner. Honestly, Steve, uh, Hoogvin had an absolutely mega first lap last race in, at Watkins. And it looked like he was yep. going to do the same until that slight contact. And this is a bit of a nightmare for Hoogvin as he's dropped behind Malarin. And all that chaos has promoted Winslade up to the lead. I was just about to say, Mr. Dependable back in <laughs> straight to the front. Yes, we see Chalcroft now in fourth. And yeah, I think we're going to need to work out what on earth happened there. That was, honestly, took your eye off the ball and then just chaos happened as we see. That's Kelly straight on at the first corner, promoting Chalcroft up to third, who gets demoted straight back down to fourth again as Russell Bright is there on the inside. And Russell Bright stays ahead through turn three. So... Yeah, it was a nice move there by Russell. That was a very nice move. I'd like to see it on board. So we see now Forrester right up behind Winslade. These two will struggle to fight through these S's around the carousel. But we'll see if Forrester can make use of that nice long strip slipstream. A little bit of a wiggle there for Winslade. And not the yeah, idea. It's all about opportunity. staying as close as you put Oh sorry, I'm sorry Mark. Right. It's all about staying as close as you possibly can to, to take advantage of the uh, the slipstream down the start finish straight. It is indeed, and actually with that little wiggle from Winslade, I think Chris Forrester might have had a little wiggle of his own because he's dropped right back. He's now still just in the clutches of the slipstream. As we see now, Russell Bright with fastest lap. Messenger in the pits at the moment. Well, that's a shame. I wonder if he got caught up in a first lap incident and is pitting for repairs. As we see now, Kelly there with... Oh, straight to the inside and straight off the road. Malarin did very well to avoid that. Yeah, he saw that coming. He did. He saw that coming, just opened the steering up, said, you know what, you're never making that corner. You can go into the barrier, mate. And that's exactly what Kelly did, unfortunately. As we see Winslade still defending heavily from Forrester. Oh, Winslade goes a little bit wide. Will Forrester have the inside here? Forrester just not with enough grip, not enough room to get past, but he's right on the back of Winslade now. He'll be in the slipstream down this long back straight. Will he be able to stay close enough to the final corner? This final corner goes so well, fast. These two, my, my apologies, while these two are battling, it also opens the door for uh, Russell Bright to close the gap it as well. It certainly does. Forrester now just two tenths. Winslade starting to defend the inside, but doesn't leave enough room to stop Forrester who takes the inside and takes the lead Chalcroft with a, a, a 109-111 for a for fastest lap at the present the Hoogvin and Malarin look like they were fighting Malarin now just 8 tenths behind Hoogvin so now this is a four way battle for the, for the lead it is Forrester from Winslade from Bright from Chalcroft Four of them, look how close they are. Oh, as we see Forrester getting a little squirrely out of that hairpin there. But I think Winslow might have been looking too much in his mirrors and not on the car ahead, because he looks like he's dropped a couple of tents there. Because they want to be so All four close. cars. Yeah, they need to be so close. Yeah, all four cars covered by a second, which is fantastic. That's amazing. We see it'll be a battle of the slipstream. Forrester won out this time last lap. Will Winslade get back ahead? 
He's pulled to the inside. Now it'll be a drag race down to first corner. Who will be latest on the brakes? Who will have the most grip? Who will find the better line? A little lock up there from Winslade. He had the inside. He goes wide and he's off the track. Forrester back in the lead from Bride from Chalcroft. Winslade went very wide there. He's recovered back in fourth place. But that looks to put him a good few seconds behind this leading trio now. Malarin right behind Ugovin now as well, so that's uh, that's going to be close. Indeed, these two wizard liveried wizards fighting for the championship. Can sure get past. Uh, Ugovin defends the inside. Malarin sticks to the outside, so we see another car off the road. That was Winslade again off the road. Yeah, he's having a poor race this, today at uh, oh, this, this one at, um, in the second race he's, he's got. Yeah, that's a shame. But well, he focus back on this fight for the lead. Forrester from right from Chalcroft. I'll tell you what, Steve, this reverse grid format can produce some absolute blinding races. As we see now, Bright and right. Chalcroft both in the slipstream. Will Bright dive to the inside? Who will be latest on the brakes? No, they're all sticking to their guns, sticking to their lines. Status quo remains. Forrester from Bright from Chalcroft. Doesn't stop Bright from having a look though. Just a cheeky little nose to the inside. But thinks better of it. Also he's got a very good run out here. Will he be able to dive on into the hairpin? Don't think so. No. They remain as they were. Of course, Forrester now really feeling the pressure. You can see a few mistakes starting to creep in. It's getting a little bit too early on the gas. Just getting a little squirrely. They want to keep that under control. Russell Bright really close to him now. It's just, a just over a tenth. Indeed. Going through the final corner. Bright now dives to the inside. I think he's got enough of an overspeed. I think he... If he can be late on the brakes, he should get this position. Charkoff there in the background, just trying to decide who slipstream do I want? Do I go left? Do I go right? Do I just sort of stick in the middle? Forrester now refusing to yield, trying to keep it around the outside. Of course, Bright will get that position. And now Forrester looks like he's going to lose a place to Charkoff as well. Forrester just a little bit too wide. As they go... Side by side through turn three. I think that was a little touch. Chalkoff went slightly wide into the gravel, but I don't think he's lost too much momentum. Still going side by side, Steve. Yep, yeah, and uh, with these two battling now side by side, it's given uh, Russell Bright the chance to just break a little bit, and he's now nearly two seconds in front. Oh, uh, Hugovin off Hugovin the road. Off, off. And will he hit the barrier? Looks like he won't hit the barrier, but he will probably get... Well, actually, I think at that corner, you won't get a slowdown. You might even get a straight black flag. Possibly. I think he's off looking for uh, Paul Newman, who, who's raced here, you know. <laughs> uh, the, the interesting fact that I found out about uh, Summit Point was Paul Newman actually raced a Datsun 510 here. Did he really? And uh, nobody actually... Yeah, he did. Yeah, nobody actually knew it was Paul Newman, because the, on, the only thing that... Uh, denoted that it was him was on his uh, race car he had the number plate PLN that's fascinating so yeah he kept it nice and nice and uh, under wraps that's good to know right as we see we're going to see a replay of what happened this was the first corner there Hoogvin uh, uh, yeah turned in a little too early and just clipped the back of Costa I think that was and then yeah that was the that was the start of it wasn't yeah it? and then I think Chaos ensued as people were trying to avoid him. As we see Chalkoff now defending from Forrester. Bright now has escaped to a good sort of couple of seconds, two or three seconds down the road. Yeah, I think this, this result has been coming for a, for a while for Russell. Um, he's, he's been very steady throughout the races. He's just been unfortunate with either incidents that have happened with him or he's... Uh, He's just lost the back end, and obviously, race one he had that beach where um, when he went on the uh, on the rumble strips and, and uh, couldn't get started again. But he's, this is looking very good for him. And actually, I'm just reviewing my notes, Steve. And that's some bright. He's yet to get a podium. 
which I find absolutely remarkable because he's shown such amazing pace so far. Yeah, but he seems to have a lot of confidence when it comes to this car as well, though, and, and the track lends itself to, uh, you know, just keeping it nice and steady, not taking risks, and Russell's very good at doing that. Indeed he is. So, yeah, we'll see if Bright can hang on for his maiden podium. Small little lock-up there from Childcraft. He's obviously feeling the pressure from Forrester. As we see a replay here of Aaron Jenkins. Oh, just, yeah, got a little snap of oversteer on exit, and looked like he'd caught it, but unfortunately the barrier was in the way. And that is a lot of damage, and he is now in the pits. Yeah, that was a, a very broken car after the uh, collision with the barrier there. And tell you what, Steve, you know who else is in the pits? Hoogavin. So I think Hoogavin must have gotten either a black flag from that or damage from that previous off track that we saw. Yeah, possibly. And now. That's not good for his championship uh, standings. Indeed, it's not. Oh, Forrester goes off. Forrester on. goes off. And Charlecroft spins as well. And, and Malari is off to second. into second. <laughs> and this changes the championship standings <laughs> completely, Steve. I was just about to say, fourth place for Chil Malarin would not be enough to get the championship. He needs a podium. And that's exactly where he is. Yeah, that's just... Handed it to uh, to Malarin. Indeed. So if Malarin can keep it in second, he will have, if my maths is correct, a 92 point. No, sorry, a 97 point lead. And he needs a 94 point lead after the drop scores to win the championship. So yeah, he'd be he'd win the championship at this round. If he can confirmed, if he can stay in second, third would also yep. be sufficient because they would then be tied on points. But obviously, with count back, Malarin has more wins. So yes, a podium is what Malarin needs, and a podium is what what Malarin currently has. So we've seen so many incidents already this race. Can Malarin keep it on the podium to win the championship? Can Bright keep it? on the road to claim a maiden podium and a maiden win. Well, I've certainly got my fingers crossed for Russell Bright. He's deserved this the results after uh, a hard season. Indeed. Just keep it on the track, Russell. Indeed. And with eight laps to go, we've got Olive, Forrester, Chowcroft and Winslade all really sort of within a few seconds of each other. All seemingly like, looking like they can fight for that final podium position. Russell's keeping the uh, the gap to uh, Malarin at over eight seconds as well, so he's, he's lapping in the same sort of uh, areas as, as Tour as well, so that's that's good for him and all. Indeed. So Bright then sets him on 109.1. Let's see what Malarin can do. A oh, 109.1, matching each other to the tenth of a second. Yeah, four hundredths between the two. Yeah, so... Right now, he's got an eight and a half second lead. He just needs to keep it steady. Just keep it on the road. And this victory is his. As we see there, Kenneth Olive now. Forrester just a second and a bit behind. Can Olive keep Forrester behind? Will they make contact again? As we see, Olive coming through. The aforementioned Nissan Leaf corner, EV Gardener turn, and through the carousel into the S's. There's some fantastic names for corners in there. There is. There really is. There is indeed. As we see, action on track. Actually, the gaps are staying relatively static. This Olive Forester battle looks to be the closest one on track. Bright's just done a 108.9. And Malara's on a 109.4, so yeah, Bright's now starting yeah, to come away. Yeah, six tenths between the lap times. That's a fantastic lap. And having said that, it's not even as if Malara had a particularly poor lap, because Malara was matching everyone else. Just Russell Bright just, yeah, he's just turned it up to 11. Several drivers, though, getting into the 108, so the track's either decreasing in uh, in temperature and it's, uh, it's enabling faster times, or the 
the track seems to have, uh, or the tyres, my apologies, the, the, the tyres have maybe coming towards some drivers and not others. Yeah, quite possibly. Because it's quite easy, we've seen quite a lot of mock ups here, it's quite easy to overheat your tyres as we see Winslade in the wall. And toes. And toes. Exactly what I was saying, yeah, it's quite easy to overheat the tyres and then you find yourself in the next corner with less grip than you were expecting. I think that's exactly what happened to Winslade, that's a big hit again. Just got a little too wide coming through turn three, clipped the gravel, and that just, yeah, kicked the car out from under him onto the grass. And once you touch the grass, you're just a passenger. Yeah, that was a big hit running into the side there. As we see, this is not a fight for position that Lawrence, Aaron Jenkins are lapped down, just being very nice to the drivers in third and fourth and just getting out of the way and making their lives a lot easier. I say it's all it's all about respect and uh, and driving sensibly and the the league itself is is full of drivers that have respect for others other drivers get out of the way when they need to do and and it's all good fair racing exactly I mean yeah just using Lawrence as an example there he by no means had to get out of the way he would have been well within his rights to sort of defend well not defend that position but not yield, but yeah, doing the sensible thing, just recognising that it's in the best interests of all the drivers. If he just lifts out the throttle slightly, lets the leaders through. Russell, Russell Bright's now just seven seconds in front of Malaya, and I was wondering if he had a bit of a, a bit of a moment on one of the corners. Yeah, it's a one ten point four lap lap, a bit of a slow lap. I don't know if he had a little lock up or something, maybe a loft track. As we see now, Forrester just five tenths behind Kenneth Olive, matching the times to the tenth of a second, just one hundredth between them. As we see Forrester hard on the brakes, a little lock up there, and we see now Olive start to bring that gap back up a bit. Forrester just maybe forgot that he was in the slipstream, just braked a little bit too late, forgot that he was carrying a bit of extra speed, and into the gravel there. Yeah, that's lost him another few tenths to Olive. He's almost out of slipstream now. He's got three laps left at the end of this round. So if he wants, if he wants this podium position, he can't afford too many little mistakes like that. So we'll see if he can get back onto the back onto the back of uh, Olive. Forrester, of course, had a podium in the first round with that rather sort of quiet race from him, just getting his head down and putting in some good lap times. So we know he's capable of getting a podium. As we see Olive now going very defensive. Almost. Yeah, there was, se there was seven tenths in the last lap between uh, Bright and Malarin. Well, that certainly won't be enough to uh, to bring Malarin back into uh, in contention. Right, so see Olive. For the win if, uh, if he's not. Olive's oh, spun. Yeah, track. just got a little bit too wide. Just missed the apex slightly. And that's just handed Forrester the podium position on the plate. That's it. Just one slip like that and round it goes and you're up on the uh, on the grass. I didn't actually know you could get onto that part of the track. Too did I. <laughs> Maybe he'll have to start billing some point for his landscaping and gardening services mowing the lawn like that. As we see, Michael Metager, he's had a fairly quiet race. Down in sixth. He's now just half a second behind Olive after Olive had that spin. So we'll see if Messenger can sneak into the top five. That front car in this train is Winslade. Oh, Messenger spins it on exit of turn nine. So... Yeah, just dipped a wheel on the yeah, grass. so will he be able to get into the top five? Um, it's looking a lot harder now. That is unfortunate. As we see now, Charlecroft, he, that is a lapped car of Gavin Kelly behind him, so not having to be too pressured. And yeah, the field's starting to spread out a bit now after we've seen a couple of people make mistakes, so with two laps to go, we've got Bright with a superbly fast race, some very good lap times from him. Four and a half seconds ahead of Malarin, who is really closing that gap but I don't think he's closing it quickly enough to challenge for the lead. Of 
course, Malarin, a second place is good enough for the championship, but to be honest, with all these drop scores and things like that, I don't know if he's thinking about the championship. I mean, it, it's taken me however many hours behind a spreadsheet trying to work out what on earth is going on, so I can't imagine trying to work all that out whilst behind the wheel of a car, so Malarin may not know that he's about to win the championship. Well, Russell Bright onto the last lap now, so with four seconds in hand, uh, just keep it nice and steady, keep it on the track, and uh, he should be in for a win. Indeed, he's got about 60 seconds left. Just keep it on the track, keep it slow and steady. Malara in 3.8 behind, so yeah, this is Bright's victory to lose. All he needs to do is avoid making any mistakes. Completely under no pressure whatsoever. We see him go through the S's for the very final time. Through turn nine and onto this nice long back straight. Just a dab of brakes and chuck it into that last right hander. Floor it as soon as you can. Russell Bright crosses the finish line to win at Summit Point. Oh, fantastic result. Well done, Russell. Um, this has been coming for quite some time. Like I say, he's been unlucky in so many races. And, uh, yeah, and brilliant result. Malarin taking second place. And then our Forrester coming over in uh, third to take the last podium position. Exactly. And Malarin without second place. I'm just doing the maths. I think he's done it. I'll have to wait for championship standings just to c confirm. He needs a 94-point gap, I think, if my math is correct. I think he's done enough, but I'm doubting myself. So, as we see there, Russell Bright doing some podiums. Um, some podiums? Some donuts. <laughs> as we see, what a fabulous race. Yeah, obviously. Russell, that's it. Russell Bright with a win. Uh, Tom Morell, I'm in second. Chris Forrest to set third. Uh, ben Childcraft, Kenny Fellow, My uh, Messenger, sixth. Bert Roberto Costa, seventh. Gavin Kelly, eighth. Uh, Winslade, ninth. And uh, the rest to follow. So, as we see, championship standings. Tim Malarin on 226 points. That is, if my quick mental math is correct, a 97 point gap, which means that Tim Malarin has won the championship. Oh, wrapped up. Fantastic. Um, yeah, well deserved from start to finish. So, yeah, great result for, for Tour. So, yeah. As you say, to you, this has been the Chumalarin Masterclass. Absolute domination in the first... Well, having said that, he absolutely dominated the first half of this championship. He's not had a win in the past two yeah. races. Oh, well, past two rounds. Yeah, I think that's. I think they, he set it up nicely in the first few rounds. Um, that's what they, he built his... Uh, um, he's he's uh, championship on, and to be honest with you, it'd be nice to see next season um, what happens with uh, with the rest of the time. Uh, obviously, we've got people coming strong. Russell Bright now with a win under his belt. Um, Michael Messenger coming in, taking the win in the first race. So it's going to be interesting to see when it moves on next year, uh, next season. Um, we'll be at the top then if we can challenge the tour for, uh, for the championship indeed and that brings us to the end of this race so thank you very much for tuning in I've been Mark joining me in the commentary booth have been Steve thanks a lot Steve thanks and Mark see thank you it's been a pleasure and we'll see you next time